In this question we will be looking at how to use the pinching theorem to find the two-sided limits of some function at some point, fixed point. Uh, in our case our function is x sine 1 over x and we need to find its limit when x goes to zero. When we need to use the pinching theorem we need to always to estimate our function from above and from below. In our case for x is which are not equal to zero, we always have that sine 1 over x is smaller than 1 and bigger than minus 1. And this inequality, of course, holds for all non-zero axes. And now we would like to, to multiply these inequalities by axes, but we need to be a bit more careful because when we have both negative values of x's and, both, uh, and positive values of x's. And so we need to, be, uh, to do it for positive x's firstly and then for negative x's. When x is positive, we of course can multiply our inequality without any changes and just uh, write x's everywhere. Uh, but for negative axis, we, when we multiply our inequality swaps so that we have minus x is larger than x sine 1 over x and larger than x. So we have the estimate in this form and for simplicity we will rewrite it as x uh, smaller than x sine x and smaller than minus x. So we have these inequality for positive values of x and these inequalities for uh, negative values of x. Of course, uh, we can rewrite it as minus the absolute value of x is x smaller than x sine 1 over x and smaller than the absolute value of x. So now we have the estimate of our function x sine 1 over x from below by minus the absolute value of x and from above by the absolute value of x. So on the graph we will have the function which is the absolute value of x and here is the function negative absolute value of x. And our function x sine 1 over x lies some, somewhere between them. So it goes something like that. And of course we do not care about the large values of x's. For simplicity we will denote by f of x the negative value of x and by h of x the absolute value of x itself. And now we have that the limit of f of x when x goes to 0, which is just the limit x goes to 0 minus the absolute value of x, is 0. And also the same is true for the function h of x equals to 0. So we have that our function x sine 1 over x is bounded from above by the function h of x, which goes to 0, and is bounded from below by the function f of x, which also goes to 0 when x goes to 0. It means that the limit when x goes to 0 of our function x sine 1 over x is also equal to 0, which is the solution for our question. In the second part of this video we will be looking at a bit different limit. So we have to find the limit when x goes to 0 of x squared sine 1 over x. And again we should use the pinching theorem to find this limit. For, to use the pinching theorem we again to, we need to find the estimate from below and from above. And for, as in the first part, for non-zero axes we always have that sine 1 over x is between 1 and minus 1. So our x squared is always a positive number and we can just multiply by x squared these inequalities. 
So we have minus x squared less than or equal to x squared sine 1 over x and less than or equal to x squared. So we, as in the previous part, we again said f of x is equal to minus x squared and h of x is just x squared. And we have that the limit when x goes to zero of both f of x and h of x is just zero because it's x squared. It's, they both are continuous functions. Therefore, we can use now the pinching theory and infer that the limit when x goes to zero x squared sine 1 over x is also equal to 0. And this is the correct solution for this question.